Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hi everyone. Oh yes, there I am. I think I am live now. This is Dr. Robin McKay and I'm so happy to be here with you. I am going to just do one thing as we get started and announce this on my Facebook page that we are coming in together today for a very, very special illuminating announcement, I guess I will call it. Hold on just a second. Near death experiences and unlocking your highest calling. Join us. Okay, there we go. So let me do that. Very good. I'll share it there and I will share it there just in case. Okay. Well, I want to say welcome to you all. I know it's Sunday. It seems to be sometimes a good day to do events like this because it just gives an opportunity for the energy to be very different than it is during the week. And so I'm glad to be here with you and I'm grateful that you are attending. And if you are attending live and you're here with me, I'd love to see you say hello in the comments so I can say hi back. And if you happen to be watching the recording, that's just fine too. I want to invite you to say hello and leave your comments, leave your thoughts about this very illuminating conversation we're going to have today. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in. And we are live in, of course, my Facebook group, Becoming the Channel. I'm Dr. Robin McKay. I have a PhD in counseling psychology. I have a podcast called Becoming the Channel as well, which is likely where you discovered me and my work. But some of you have been around for many, many years, so I'm grateful to have you here as well. And I'm seeing a couple of people writing in, and it's so I'm so glad to see you here with me live. This is a very important and interesting conversation I'm going to share with you today. We're going to be talking for probably about mm, 20 minutes or so, and I do have an invitation toward the end of our, our conversation today for those of you who feel like you're leaning into what I'm talking about, like you're you're picking up what I'm dropping down. Miriam is here and Joanne is here. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to have you. So I'm going to dive in and it's 3.33 my time. So I'm very, I love those numbers. So this is a great time to begin. I want to begin by sharing with you, for those of you who are new to my world, that I have worked with gifted and talented women for many, many years. In fact, I wrote a book on it years ago. It's almost 10 years that Smart Girls in the 21st Century came out. And in one of the chapters of that book, my co-author and I wrote about spiritual intelligence as being one of the intelligences that is yet to be, un yet to be fully explored or understood. But that captivated my attention so much because I've been on my own personal journey of spiritual intelligence for as long as I can remember. I've been a clear channel since I was a little girl. And when I was about 28 years old, I had what I can only call as an existential crisis. I see, it seems so young to have an existential crisis, but I really did. When I looked around my life and I said, is this all there is? There has to be more than this. This is not what I imagined when I was 16 because I was living in suburbia of Kansas City and I was working in biotech and I was driving one way to work 45 minutes and I was exhausted and I was burned out and I was married to my college sweetheart though while he was a very kind man, he was somebody who wanted an ordinary life and he was quite satisfied with that and I always knew that I was meant for something more. I had other work to do besides living an ordinary life. And so that was a time that I really think I became I'll say, fully responsible for my spiritual gifts, if you know what I mean. In other words, I've been intuitive since I was a little kid, but it wasn't until my late 20s and early 30s that I really began coming online as a spiritually intelligent leader. And that process has taken me over 20 years to come to this place with you today. Well, one of the things that I did early on was I started studying and researching spiritual intelligence and profiling creative and intuitive people to really help me understand who we are. 
One of my teachers in graduate school told me that research is me-search, and that certainly has been the case for me all of these years. In fact, um, I remember early on doing my own psychological profile to understand my own brain and my own consciousness and understanding my own spiritual and energetic abilities that were oftentimes unexplainable to most people and misunderstood, quite frankly. Uh, but my mission really was to, even at that early part of my career, to make the world safe for intuitive and spiritually gifted people. And I don't know if that's still my mission because I think that we're here to make the world safe for everybody else, but I do think it is important for us to know ourselves. So I wanna, I wanna just share with you a little bit about what I have discovered in the ensuing years that I've been doing all of this work. You know, I started my coaching practice 10 years ago and I always knew who I was meant to work with. I knew I was meant to work with women in particular um, who were very, very intelligent. In other words, they probably had high IQs. A lot of them were able to figure things out quickly, make sense of things, and know what to do about, to do about it. And that is, by definition, intelligent. It's really processing speed. So I knew I was meant to work with people who had fast processors in their brains. And I also knew that I was meant to work with the creatives the innovators and the intuitives. And those two things, the intelligence, and then I'll call it the intuition or the creativity, those had an intersection in a very small subset of people. So as I started my work, it turned out that a lot of these women were coming to me from healthcare, so they were physicians, they were coming to me from tech, they were engineers, they were scientists, they were like me, who, um, you know, I was a scientist to begin with and then I became a social scientist in psychology. And so they were coming to me from psychology and the allied health professions as well. And it, literally, you guys, it was not until, I think this morning actually was the first time I put it all together. I'd been thinking about it, but I finally put it together this morning. I started looking at the group of people that I'm working with now. They're all very accomplished people, which is to be expected because I've always worked with very accomplished people. They're all tuned into their intuition. In other words, they have experiences that are sort of unexplainable by logical and rational methods. But when we look at things from the spiritual perspective, we can make sense of them. They're spiritually gifted. In other words, they actually create real world transformation using their, their abilities as spiritual beings. They're awake and they're aware of what's going on in the world and how things are working and what the mission is, which is to bring this planet back to the people and to bring heaven to earth. So they're aware of all of those things. But there was something missing from my profile. And it really wasn't missing, it was hiding in plain sight. When I realized that there are, I have a handful of physicians who work with me right now privately and every single one of them has had a near-death experience. Every single one of them has had a near-death experience. So it started with my physicians, which it always does. I've worked with physicians for many, many years, and um, there's something about that group of people that I've always just understood and felt drawn to and am able to help them overcome all kinds of things from burnout to corporate trauma and so on. So I thought it was just the physicians first. Maybe it's just the physicians who have near-death experiences who are coming to work with me. I thought that was an interesting concept. But then I cast a wider net and I started looking at all of the clients who are working with me privately right now. And I would say about 80% of them, 80% of the people who are working with me now have had near-death experiences, either health scares, meaning um, a heart condition, that would have created a near-death experience and that they came back from um, cancer or something like that, or they've been in really bad car accidents. And not recently, by the way. It just seems to be at some point in their lives, they've had this experience of having a near-death experience. So the interesting thing to me i feel and i want to stop here for just a moment because that makes me feel so excited to recognize that there was this x factor i'll call it and in all the years i've been doing this work when i look in hindsight at all of the people who have come in through my doors and have worked with me privately the common thread 
is having a near-death experience. For I'm going to estimate right now 75 to 80% of the people who have come through the doors, and I've worked with hundreds at this point. So this goes beyond statistical chance, of course, because not everybody has a near-death experience, but something that I'm doing and something that I'm signaling is calling them in. And the things that they're, they're coming in for are things like, what's next? They're trying to make meaning of their experiences. They're trying to sort out, am I going crazy? Why isn't anybody else understanding what I'm, what I'm going through or what I'm seeing? Because they all have, as it turns out, I'll call them supernatural abilities, but they're definitely in line with intuition, with psychic abilities, being able to see beyond what most people can see or know things that other people cannot know or don't know, being able to feel things that other people can't quite get a handle on, and so on. You know, the four clairs basically is what I'm referring to there. The thing that makes this community so unique is that they're all, their unspoken plea, I'll call it. And I don't mean a plea from like, pleading with me, but they really have this deep-seated desire or need to figure out what their highest calling is. Because they know that they're meant for more, just like I did all those years ago, they know that they're meant for more than an ordinary life. They've had an extraordinary, uh, they've had an extraordinary experience. They've touched the face of consciousness beyond, touched the face of the divine in some way. And they've come back, and they're changed because of it. And yet in this world we live in, we seldom talk about these experiences and there's no real clear pathway to integrating or understanding what they've experienced, much less fully expressing the resultant changes in their personalities and their perspectives as a result of the near-death experience. So I think this is all so important right now in particular because we are on the cusp of a new year, of course, and we always do a lot of taking stock, don't we? Our lot being highly intuitive and intelligent and on purpose in our, in our lives, we really do want to take a look at where am I meant to contribute and what am I meant to do next? And what I'm seeing transpire recently with this group of people, and maybe you can relate to this, is that it's even going beyond the normal or typical goal setting for the things that they've always done in the past. Um, job promotions, raises, vacations with the family. When you have had a near-death experience, for example, it's my impression and my understanding that your perspective of the world changes in, in ways that are both subtle but very important. That the material things that used to be very important to you seem to be no longer that important. And yet, there's still a call to, there's still a call to do something important with your life. And that is actually one of the other things that I'm finding that the people who are coming to me who have had these experiences will say is that, I, they'll say, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but I just know I'm meant for more than this. Or I don't mean to sound like I'm too big for my britches, but I just feel like I'm here for something important. I, hear, I feel like I'm here for something big. And they're very humble about it as well. So that is the kind of the umbrella term of the near-death experience. But I want to say this that along with the near-death experience, the other common thread that I see running through the people who are in my world, and you'll want to pay attention here, is that they um, have sometimes experienced the, the significant death of a loved one. Maybe they've lost a parent recently, or they've lost somebody close to them that has a meaningful, that leaves a meaningful hole in their lives, I'll say but it has brought them to a place of pausing to trying to figure out how do I go on in the face of this loss? And this goes beyond grief. It becomes, unless I called it an existential grief, which I suppose would be approaching what I'm getting at here. But there is this sense of, I have to make my life mean something because this person is no longer with me. So that is the other theme that I'm seeing. 
And then the third theme is something that I've I've mentioned more recently as I've been talking more about channeling and as, a, as I've been integrating my own channel into my life as well, is that there have been um, the, the third theme I would say, or the third part of the pattern is a walk-in experience where there's actually a part of the consciousness that comes from the oversoul and literally walks into the physical body so we can refer to this as the highest point of actualization, but the most evolved part of the consciousness, the person's consciousness actually comes in and begins taking the lead on life and making sure that the person is stepping into their highest calling and doing the mission, doing the sacred mission that they were here called to do. So those are the three, right? We have the near-death experiences, we have the, the death of a loved one, the death of a loved one, which also instigate, instigates or activates this need to step into highest calling. And then the third is the literal walk-in experience where the highest point of actualization of the, of the person's consciousness will come in and take the lead and insist that the person move into the highest consciousness. And by insist, I don't mean dominate. I just simply mean that it becomes inevitable that when, a, when that part of the consciousness comes in, that the highest calling will naturally unfold as a result of the highest consciousness coming in. So I hope that you're feeling how excited I am about this because this is a long time coming for me. I remember because, I, because I'm a social scientist and I'm constantly profiling people and I'm constantly looking for patterns that just is what I do. And you know, I've been talking about personalities and, and the profiling of intuitive channels and things like that for years now, actually. But this missing link for me is something that is going to make all the difference because it even refines even further exactly who is meant to be working with me. So to be clear, accomplished people, usually in healthcare, oftentimes also in engineering, and of course, you know, there are the, the entrepreneurs who come into coaching and consulting who are also part of this, but they all identify as either helpers or healers in some way. In some capacity, they are a helper or a healer. So, for example, the engineers who come in are the emotionally intelligent ones that often bear the, the onus of the, the emotional well-being of the entire team that they're working with and for because they're their engineer, their engineer leadership is unable to do that because they don't have the capacity, if that makes sense. So there's that piece. They identify as innovative or creative or intuitive, and oftentimes they keep their intuition kind of behind the scenes because they don't want their colleagues or their families or anybody to misunderstand them or think that they're crazy or lose their credibility because of their native intuition. And that, as a side note, is something that I am working very diligently on to change because I do believe we need to be leading from wisdom, intuition, and spiritual intelligence. And then the third piece is that usually they'll have some kind of life-altering event, like I've described, either a near-death experience, the profound loss of somebody close with them that has changed their perspective on what they're supposed to be doing in the world, or they've had literally a spiritual walk-in experience. And so the clarity, I think, is so important, isn't it? The clarity is so important because when you, you're in a place where you're trying to sort through what is going on in my life, why is this happening, what am I supposed to do with this, there are really kind of two pathways that we go down. One pathway is everything changes inevitably. The other pathway is I'm going to ignore that this ever happened and I'm going to try to do business as usual. And people who are meant to be spiritually intelligent leaders can do business as usual for a little while, for a little while. But then eventually the inevitability of their sacred mission, of their, their highest calling comes into, into view and they really lean into that versus staying in the ordinary world versus trying to maintain the status quo, because maintaining the status quo takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus, and it really pulls away from the highest calling. 
So I have so much more to say on this topic, but I do want to honor our time today. So I do want to say this, that if you are somebody who gets this, gets what I'm talking about, if you see yourself in the description that I've given today, then I have a special opportunity for you this month that I wanted to share with you, which is that you may have seen this too. I've been talking a lot lately about life between life reviews. I've been talking a lot about the intuitive channel profile. These are two private one-on-one -on -one programs with me. They're brief and they are potent. The life between life reviews just makes good sense, especially if you've had one of those experiences, it will be important for you to take a look at what am I supposed to be doing next, given the circumstances I've been in, given the unfolding of my life as it is. So the life between life review is part of it. And then the intuitive channel profile is so important because you need to know as much about your personality profile as possible. You need to understand why you feel so different from everybody else and have clarity around how you're so different from everybody else. Not to mention, it really is important for you to understand how channeled energy, channeled information is coming through your unique perspective, your unique channel. This is a very important piece for those of us who are leaders and who are called to their highest calling. So you've heard me talking about that. And this December, between now and I haven't decided the last day, it'll probably be the solstice I'm offering. Yes, it will be the solstice, December 21st a bundled package where you get both of those, both the intuitive channel profile and, and the Life Between Life Reviews sessions for a special price. It's $223 off if you were to buy them separately. So I'm going to put those links, that link to the bundle in the comments so that you can grab that and you'll get all of the information. You'll get all of the information about those beautiful beautiful sessions with me. Most importantly, most importantly, as we're gathering more of us together, this is a snowball effect. I've been shown this is that it takes two or three or five of us or 10 of us or 12 of us or 18 of us to come together. And as we do, there's a snowball effect of gathering those who are like us who have had these experiences, walk in experiences, near death experiences, um, trauma really trauma is the i didn't mention that but that really is that third kind of category where you've had the profound loss of somebody else or a marriage or something going on in your life where there's a definitive before and after when those of us come together the web of light illuminates I don't even know how many fold. I can just see this bright, beautiful light across the planet illuminating as we come together. So that is my special invitation for you. And I would love to hear from you. I'm seeing Miriam saying this missing link makes so much sense. Yes, in the gathering of our community, the gathering of our tribe, Miriam, is very important right now, isn't it? As you know, Miriam is our galactic astrologer who, by the way, is going to be on the podcast coming soon. So you'll want to keep a, an eye out for, for that, that interview as well. I can't wait to have you on the podcast, Miriam. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close for today. Again, I'm going to put the link to the, the bundle in the comments so that you can take a look at that and get yourself signed up for it so that we can, so that we can start unfolding your highest calling for you as well. And I will be back. I'm going to be in... I've been guided every day this week. You're going to be hearing from me in Becoming the Channel Facebook group with more information on this really essential key information for those of us who are called to light leadership. Until next time, bye for now.